Hey, this is an Instagram live from the International Council of Design. My name is Anna Massoud. I'm the Director General here at the Secretariat in Montreal. I'm just starting to enjoy uh, invite our other speakers. So give me a second. Hello, hello, hello. We're still kind of waiting for the others to join us in on the call. Hello, everybody. I can see GDC is with us. Quite a few people have already started to join us. We're waiting for a couple more to join us. Give us a second to get ourselves up and going. So do you think you could request to join us? Because I'm not actually Hello. able to join you in. Hello, Bradley. Welcome. Great. Looks like we're um, all Can you hear me? Morning. Hello. So um, I'm just going to give you guys a chance to introduce yourselves. Uh, so maybe we can do a bit of a round table. Just say hello. Again, my name is Anna Masut. I'm the Director General of the Equity Secretariat here in Montreal, Canada. We're very excited to present this Instagram Live for International Design Day, which is today. Um, and I'm joined by, let's start with Elita Lam of the Hong Kong Design Institute. Do you want to say a quick hello? Oh, there's something going on there. <laughs> And uh, I am the head of the academic development of the Hong Kong Design Institute. Nice meeting you today. What I'm uh, getting so no audio, today? people, so uh, bear with me. I think it looks like Bradley is having a bit of a technical difficulty. So do you want to introduce yourself? So this is Ho So Hashisume of uh, yeah. the Japan Graphic Design Association, JAGTA. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Now it's 11 a.m. now here in Tokyo. <laughs> I'm a graphic designer, also the uh, educator for some university. I see you everyone. Great, wonderful. I'm going to give Bradley a second to sort out his technical difficulties. Okay. But I'm just going to introduce the live a little bit. So uh, the 27th of April is International Design Day. It's also the anniversary of our founding as a council. So we were founded 59 years ago. Next year will be our 60th anniversary. Um, this year, for a theme, we've chosen uh, suspended in transition. I think we're all kind of in a very weird space right now. So much has been happening. Uh, on so many different levels in the last couple of years. So we're reacting to these seismic changes and the, like these in-between spaces we're finding ourselves. But I think as designers, we always, when there is big change, start to see the potential for what can come from the change. So I think that's kind of what we'd like to explore today about these, these uncertain futures and this great possibility that we have as a result of everything, I mean, of the, the, all of the legislation that's changed in the last few years to do with climate change, obviously all of the huge changes that have happened because of the pandemic, um, how we work today, I think has changed quite a bit from even just five years ago. You know, all of these kind of social things that are happening uh, have quite a huge, huge impact on design, on design practice, on design education. Um, and I think as a council, what we like to think about is a bit, you know, on the macro scale, how is this going to affect the profession? You know, what can, what can we do uh, with the, 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 the great opportunity that we have in front of us? I'm just going to try to get Bradley back in again to see if he can join us. Looks like he's having a bit of technical issues. Let's see if he can, he can join us or not. But um, I say... 
while he's kind of trying to sort himself out, I can see that there's something happening here in terms of the connection. <laughs> Maybe we can just start to have a bit of a conversation. Um, I, the two of you, I think the reason that we invited, you know, not just practicing designers, but people that represent different types of uh, organizations and institutions is it was kind of interesting to us, for us, the kind of global view that you have as, you know, practitioners in certain case, but also as parts of associations and as part of educational institutions, you're getting kind of a prime view on this kind of macro of what's been happening and how these things have been affecting, you know, how your students are, are, are viewing design, how, you know, your fellow designers are having to adapt their practices. So, I mean, I think one of the first questions that I would like to, oh, Bradley, are you set up? Do you want to give yourself a chance to introduce yourself Can quickly you before we move on to questions? Can you hear me? Yes, yep. we can. So this is Bradley Schott of the Design Institute of Australia. Brad Bradley, do you want to say a few words before we start, just to say hello? Uh, hello, everyone. Um, yes, uh, I'm the New South Wales Chair of the Design Institute of Australia. Um, this year I started uh, studying a Master of Political Economy, uh, which is quite a change from a long career in design. Um, but I became interested um, in how design creates value. Uh, and so I'll, I'll, I'll say a few things um, that the profession I think needs to consider um, in relation to that today, because um, even from my uh, early research, there is a lot of work for us to do as a profession in order to build that link with economics. Great, that's, a, that's a, I think a very important facet of things. So, I mean, I was just, I wanted to kind of start just by kicking it off in a more general way to hear a bit, maybe just your observations regionally of, you know, where we are and where we feel that things are starting to move towards. Who would like to jump forward? I'll start. Go ahead. So um, I I will see that I see that you, you have a question about uh, the suspended in transition. Um, I think the world seems as if it has been suspended, but to me I think uh, creativity never suspends. Um, now actually the pandemic has you may perhaps agree that has accelerated the digitalization for a, year, a few years forward, which has enabled a lot of new possibilities. Right. And uh, in the beginning, as educator, like here in the Hong Kong Design Institute, we have around close to 4,000 full-time students here. So for us, we, um, we uh, uh, were a bit lost in the beginning uh, because we didn't know how to handle online lessons effectively, especially for practical lessons, where students need to do a lot of things on practicals. Um, but this situation only bothered us for a short period of time because when invention is the only solution, uh, we must learn how to adapt, right? And um, it is a surprise to see that within a month or so, our colleagues start to use their own way to uh, engage students online. Um, of course, we have a central unit here called the Center for Learning and Teaching to proactively provide a lot of assistance for online teaching. Um, there are many, many workshops organized for our colleagues to learn how to use the uh, very modern ad tech tools uh, to teach. And there are lots of short videos developed for our staff so that they can browse anytime, anywhere. And we even set up a hotline for staff so that we solve all the problem uh, quite easily somehow. Did, did your curriculum end up changing? Like, I mean, because it's been a couple years, right? So I mean, at the beginning, it's been the transition to online and everything was kind of a very big jump for universities to make. But in terms of the thinking behind, you know, how professional practice is taught and stuff like that, did you find that there were a lot of impacts on, on that, on how the, the curriculum was having to shift based on how you were seeing the profession changing? We, we didn't change much about our cu curriculum. It's only about the format of delivering the modules, the classes. And then later we found that online teaching has its beauty because for example, we can easily engage overseas speakers in different parts of the world. Like today we are speaking from different parts of the world 
And online teaching encourage our students to speak up and then they can share their ideas in different kinds of ways. They can put in their text in inbox and things. And then there are, as I said, there are many attack tools to support teaching, which has made the online lesson even more uh, interesting or interactive. Okay. So uh, what about you? What, what would be your kind of viewpoint from Japan? Okay. Um, as for me, I'm now teaching at the two universities. One is for just for lecturing things about the graphic design history or what, what's happening in Japan. So um, as a lecturer, I think it's, it was a quite important uh, period because uh, we need to catch up what's happened in the world and let, let students know what we should do uh, in terms of graphic design. And for example, the, uh, uh, two years ago or something, uh, there was a <clears throat> Black Lives Matter uh, movement happened. And then uh, we, we took the lecture uh, uh, online and then, and then you know, taking an example of what's happening in the world. Right? At the same time, COVID-19 suddenly happened, but the students have no idea what's going to be like and what, 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 what is going to be like. Now and uh, what, what we can do uh, uh, as a graphic designer uh, to contribute to the, some you know, visualization or communication related to the COVID-19. So, so for, for example, the, I, I showed some example of the graph chart of the, uh, you know, you know, of the uh, COVID-19 uh, as an information graphics. And so uh, it was quite busy to catch up what's happened <laughs> in real time. And then need to think about well, what's the relationship between the historical, you know, inform informative information graphics and uh, some communication. So it's quite um, busy. But uh, at the at the same time, as a teacher, we need to learn and then react what to do and what to teach. So it's quite tough tough season. It's still ongoing, I think. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah, I mean, I think for us too, it was at the very beginning, it was a very reactive kind of situation of, you know, right. COVID, it was changing everything, it was changing how we were working, it was changing how we were communicating with each other, it was, but two years down the line, it's also, it, we still, not that much has gone back really to normal. Um, and mm. what I, we've been finding really interesting is that there's all these other effects of things that are starting to come into play. I mean, there's a lot of you know, the realization all of a sudden that because they were, we were all able to kind of restructure everything in society so quickly right. that there's other things yeah. that can also be done just as quickly yeah. that we maybe yeah. hadn't been wanting to do. For instance, a lot of investment in infrastructure for things for sustainability. I mean, there's a lot yeah. of governments, especially in Europe, but I mean, there's a lot of governments now that are realizing, oh, okay, if we could change that so fast, then maybe yeah. we could start making a change into, mm -hmm. you know, renewable energy and other ways of doing things. Um, and also, I mean, the whole digitalization of our lives. I mean, the fact that we live our so much of our reality within the phone and, it, it, you know, it, 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 it determines how information is packaged to us and what information we see. And, you know, like even just the effects psychologically of all of those kinds of things are all very much impacted by designers on different levels, whether it's, you know, UI UX designers or graphic designers or, you know, service designers, systems users designers. I mean, there's so many, the, the, the amount of people that have been kind of involved in this whole transition. Maybe Bradley, you, you're the one with kind of these radical economic, that, that's another kind of thing that comes into play as well. You know, like uh, the whole, our economic model here that's based on a lot of, you know, increasing sales through by increasing production and consumption and all those kind of ideals that we're starting to realize ooh, it maybe isn't going to work all that well because we're starting to fall into a, a whole bunch of other issues and um you know what what are if we had to kind of grasp into this future now you know where we're not quite over at the end of whatever this change was but we're not quite into whatever the new normal really is going to be we're in this kind of yeah. new in between um, well, being, what you, being in between, what, what um, kind of feeling in the in the air? Yeah, uh, being in between is quite interesting at the moment. So um, I'm sort of yeah, 
Having having been a, an old practicing designer during the height of the uh, pandemic, um, and you know had to learn how to work at home and, and collaborate with a team of designers through. Um, you were an teams, interior designer. Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and uh, then having left that and become a student um, part way through all of that process, uh, right now. Uh, I'm experiencing some classes online and some classes in person. And even though we got quite good uh, at working online over the course of a couple of years, because, you know, you have to, um, it is actually better doing it in person. The classes in person, when you get to do them back to back with classes that are online, it is still better in person. And I think that applies to design as well. Um, so, we're still not quite out of the woods with the pandemic, but I think when we are out of the woods, I think we will see um, more opportunities for sort of growth in, in everything, uh, not just design. Um, and on the um, sort of economic side of it, I guess, um, a bit of a design issues come up for me today um, in, in trying to get into uh, this uh, session um, you know, I've got a, a webcam set up, set up on my PC here and, and, you know, I was trying to connect through that, but, um, the, the corporate control of this platform, uh, really determines how you have to do it. And so, you know, I've had to very quickly rig up this little thing to stick my phone on it in front of me here so that, um, I can connect to this because it, it simply refused to connect by any other means. Uh, so the, the, the corporations and the uh, design that they do uh, is really affecting our lives probably in far more fundamental ways than that particular one. Um, but it's something that we need to be mindful of um, for the future uh, because um, in that sense, the, the design is quite, quite powerful. And uh, who do we want to have that power, I guess, is the question. Well, yeah, I think the thing is that we, we unwittingly or wittingly have it, right? I mean, mm -hmm. there's along the, along the lines, and there's, there's a lot of designers that are involved in a lot of those decisions. Yeah. There's, a, there's oh. a responsibility that we have. Um, and I think that the ICOD um, Code of Ethics um, actually states that really, really well. <laughs> I have one mm. point to add that is, um, I think the youngster has uh, projected a lot of influence during this time to the society because uh, the coin team has actually given us an opportunity to look for new copies uh, because we are unable to uh, meet and interact outside. So that a lot of people, especially young people, um, they have resorted to new social media platforms and tools. For example, bite-sized videos, have become very popular among youngsters, and many of whom have emerged as micro influencers. Mm. They are promoting not only pop cultural trends, but also new lifestyle, and even starting their own businesses in this last couple of years. So during this period, we, we've seen a huge growth in the number of trendsetters and creators. And in a moment of suspension, people have become more innovative than ever. Do you feel that also your students are becoming more interested and involved? Because I feel like for a period, like my father's a university professor and a lot, there was a lot of complaint of just like the students are, you know, they're, they're just kind of not interested. They show up and, but I have a feel, I get the feeling that this generation is a lot more, mm -hmm. you know, they're interested. They're, they're, they, they feel like they have agency somehow in what's happening to them. Surprisingly, we have received very positive, uh, positive feedback from our students about online teaching. Of course, part of them may be refused to learn online, but many of them think that they could uh, save a lot of time for travel from home to school. And then at home, they, they are like multitask. They, they can do something other th uh, some other things else during the break time. So, and then we can easily share information online as well. So, yeah. We, we got lots of positive feedback from students about that. So I noticed that your organization changed in a quite a fundamental way a few months ago, that uh, Jagdat has decided now that 
they, they, they've kind of expanded their, their purview and the, their yeah. way. Do you want to talk to us a little bit about the thinking that was behind that? Yeah. The, in detail, the, the name of the uh, job that has actually changed from, from the Japan, Japan Graphic Designers Association to Japan Graphic Design Association. So I think that's a good point uh, from the in, individual point of view to the wider, you know, possibility of the design. It is a good thing. And also the, the, the role uh, of the graphic design is quite rapidly changing. And then the, um, as a personal comment, I think it's still quite, uh, the design activity is quite uh, connected to the um, economy quite strongly in Japan. And then actually I've, I've been stud studying, uh, I've studied in London in 2005 to 2007 or things like that. And then learned about uh, some conceptual things and then reading the context things there and, and etc. And then um, it's quite rare to um, to think that sort of the creative thinking in the uh, real life, in the real business, you know, circumstances. So that's why it's quite a good thing to <clears throat> uh, spread the idea or our creativity as a just one merely the designer to, to the, you know, action as a design itself so it's a good, good thing and then let me just uh, explain one interesting uh, example uh, of the exhibition happened in tokyo uh, and that was called uh, which which mirror do you want to leak it's uh, actually the uh being held as a virtual exhibition then the originally was held by the three european graphic designer one is abake and one another is the Radim Pesco, which is a typeface designer. And then Sophie Dithering is a graphic design curator. And then been doing the exhibition worldwide. And then they, they've been thinking to have the exhibition uh, in Tokyo in 2000, I think the 20. So just at the same timing of the Tokyo Olympics. And the main theme was to <clears throat> have the uh, alternative reality of the design and the communication behind the, you know, big history like Olympics. But the funny thing is uh, uh, Olympic was, as you know, they postponed for, for some reason. And then um, the, you know, funny thing is that, uh, you know, uh, altern alternative became the reality. You know what I'm saying? It's a, it's a fake or, uh, you know, untruth or un uh, uncertain information these days becomes more you know, reality. That's a quite paradox thing that is happening. So the exhibition is more, uh, the focusing is on some speculation regarding it to the <clears throat> graphic design. For example, the, uh, it was actually the collaboration work between uh, a university called the Tokyo University of the Arts. That I was actually in charge of the, some advising and having the lecture for them. But uh, the funny thing is, an uh, interesting thing is uh, the exhibition is uh, <clears throat> just uh, between uh, in, in the COVID season. So that's why the student had a kind of a Zoom meeting and then some communication using the Discord or any whiteboard online, you know, tools, which was quite, um, for me, it looks really natural for them. Natural. It's not, it's not kind of a virtual, virtual whiteboard writing or brainstorming thing. They use that, that sort of the tool and some communication itself it's quite natural for them, uh, uh, 20 or 21 years old or um, so. So what I'm saying is, uh, and, and, yeah, as you guys said, and the uh, teaching and the learning and the, or preparing the exhibition is becoming uh, virtual, but, but it's, it's kind of the paradoxically became the real for the student or younger generation, I think. Mm -hmm. it was, it was so you had a really interesting um... Yeah. You had a really interesting observation there. So um, that Jagda has actually broadened uh, its focus um, from the designer uh, out to yeah. design more generally. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we've actually gone the other way at the Design Institute of Australia um, and actually narrowed our focus much more on okay. professional designers. Okay. Um, and the reason for that is to uh, try and uh, draw a line between the value of, of professional design 
and uh, design in general because we know that anyone can, you know, hang out a, a shingle and call themselves a designer. Um, but to be a professional designer involves a lot more um, responsibilities and a lot more, you know, possibilities to create value. Um, so that's our, our focus is actually um, much more on the on the professional aspect of it. And that's that's really interesting that um, Jagda has has gone the other way. Yeah. Okay, we, we actually are kind of getting towards the end of our time. I just wanted to throw out one last question to all of you. Um, what is it in the last, you know, two years, are you starting to see what is the one thing that you'd say that you're seeing is starting to emerge? That's new? Uh, that you think is going to have some effect on the design profession going forward? Well, Haha, <laughs> <laughs> it's a hard question. I mean, that's the funny Ooh. thing of where we are, right? Because everything feels kind of some something's happening, but it's not quite clear right. what. Right. Uh, can I? Yeah. Try? Elito, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Um, now, uh, during the pandemic uh, period, um, we've been working with the company on uh, PPE product development. Um, that is to design collection of masks and also protective clothing. And we find a possibility to engage students to apply design onto these kind of products. So um, for that, I think uh, it involves a lot of multidisciplinary collaboration or even transdisciplinary collaboration. For me, I'll see in the future, we must work with different view of expertise in order to, um, to achieve a good product design. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. The multidisciplinary, transdisciplinary focused. Does anybody else have anything to add gonna, to that? I'm going to broaden it right back out again now. Um, we have designed for ourselves a world and an economy where the value of something is measured by how much somebody is prepared to pay for it. Uh, and as a profession, that has become a problem for us because... It's, a, it's like a circular logic, and that just results in a spiral downwards in fees. Um, now, to, to get out of this, we need to actually look at how we design a better way of practicing and uh, design a better way of valuing what we do. And um, looking at this and trying to tie this back to economics, I can see that there's, there's actually a lot of work at the academic level in defining exactly what design is and how it creates value uh, that needs to be done so that it can be tied back into uh, uh, back into economics because um, I'm struggling with that now. Yeah, I, I mean, I think we we all I mean, this discussion of, of you know, how to how to how to have designers be recognized for their professional capacities mm -hmm. and advocate for that. It has been uh, I think it's a, it's a pretty global discussion at this point. Mm -hmm. Can I just say something? <laughs> of course, yeah, please. Um, taking, that example, taking that example that which Mira do you want to leak example. Uh, actually, the, uh, the exam uh, exhibition was being uh, successfully held by the crowdfunding. And so that was quite unique uh, in Japan because uh, for some exhibition or some activity, you know, client or any organization pay for money for having the exhibition. But uh, the, in that case, the student had some presentation or some documentary um, you know, movie or some graphic design things before having the exhibition. So which is a quite unique structure. And then it's not a classical, cl classic way of, you know, and having the job or, you know, doing some creative things. So I, I mean, the structure is changing. For for example, the, when you when you see the Kickstarter, there's a lot of the book book designing, book publishing funding. So there was a quite good you know um, example of the presenting some what's gonna book be like or what what what, what is the interesting point about when, when it it is, it is successfully published. So the, the structure is changing. So. So before that, if someone will want to publish the book and they won't, won't let some designer to design something. But, uh, but uh, the structure is now more kind of the, um, he or she, if he, he or she wants to publish something, they kind of the virtually design before publishing it. 
you know what I mean? It's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's not virtual, but it's, an, it's, I mean, the process of designing is visually and gradually changing, which seems quite interesting to me. Yeah. Yeah, I think in a sense, you're all saying things that are very connected. Yeah, in the sense yeah, that you know yeah, when you have something very big society, happen yeah, and everyone yeah, has yeah, to come yeah. together and find solutions yeah. you end up breaking down the silos and working with right. people you wouldn't normally have um and maybe even the very isolation that we're feeling being in our houses working by ourselves is also what makes it possible to just as easily speak to someone who's outside of your normal you know, circle and talk to other disciplines or designers or think of projects in new ways just because you have equal access to people globally at this point. Right. Whereas before, maybe you had much of a, of a more direct connection right. just to the people around you. So I mean, maybe that's something that we really want to retain in, in the yeah. sense that yeah. the capacity to connect more and mm. better and, and collaborate more on, on things. Right. Okay. Design well, is about solving problems. We've got a lot of work to do. <laughs> well, you know, there's always a lot of work to do. We're actually kind of at the end of our half hour, so we're going to do a, a bit of a wrap up. But um, I just wanted to get a, to to thank you all for for contributing to this. Um, this has been our first Instagram Live of International <laughs> Design Day, so we're we're kind of going with the sun at this point um, here in Montreal. It's still yesterday, but for you, you guys have already started the 27th of April on your side of the planet. <laughs> so. Um, Thanks again to Alita, to Bradley, and to So for joining us from Hong Kong, from Australia, and from Japan. We will be doing three more Instagram Lives. So the next one will be one that will take place uh, in Africa uh, in a few hours, and then Europe, and then there'll be one for the Americas, which will be given in Spanish uh, for those who want to listen uh, in Spanish. So um, I hope that you all, those of you who have joined us and who will eventually watch this video, take some time to consider where design is going and what futures we want to create on this opportunity for International Design Day. And it has been a real pleasure to be here with the three of you. And thank you so much for everyone who joined us. Um, so this has been the uh, Asia Australia Instagram Live for International Design Day. Happy International Design Day to all of you. We do. Happy Design Day. <laughs> okay. We do. <laughs>